Alrighty, welcome back. This is our bubble top supercharged 84 LTD station wagon. Um, this car was built for uh, Guy Meister, and Guy Meister has a monster truck, and uh, he's a local, what can I say? He's a local stunt man, I guess you would call him, because he's not afraid to do much of anything. And uh, when we built him this car, he wanted something, he was telling me something for the kids, you know, and that's why we got the race car, the seat in the center, and the car behind, you could take a, a kid for a ride. I'm not sure if a kid will want to get in a ride with this thing with Earl or not, but not Earl, Guy, yeah. Earl's his brother, sorry. Uh, Guy's, a, like I said, the local stunt man. And uh, this car was built for him, and it was built for the kids to go for a ride. We have the steering wheel in the center. Joey's going to open the door for me let me out. But the steering wheel is in the center of this bad boy, so the steering had to be changed. As you can see, the dash, we wanted to make the dash, uh, what can I say? Futuristic. Futuristic, that's the word I'm looking for. We wanted to make the da dash futuristic. And guess what? Guess what lines the dash? Bad Chad flexible chrome. That's what's going on there. So that makes that dash looks pretty pretty cool. Uh, the steering column is in the center, so that had to be modified and dealt with. The seats are in the center over top of the hump, so that had to be modified and dealt with. It has very it's airplane seats in it. Uh, the bubble was blown for it. We did that on TV. Uh, the paint job uh, was painted right in the shop uh, by me. Um, the paint job on this car uh, is a metal flake paint job. I'm going to get out of here. It's not very graceful, but it is fun to get into. And one thing I will say about this car. When we delivered the car, um, I was asked to pull it off the trailer. I wasn't very, wasn't keen on uh, guy driving or guy driving it up the road at first. And, and I just didn't know. Well, we didn't know. We never test dr driving it, drive it or nothing. It just, we didn't do anything. We got it running and we took it there on a the trailer. That was it. But when I get in the car to pull it off the trailer, it's, when it started up, it was, it was so, what can I say? I never actually been in a car that had or wanted to take off so bad in all my life. When, when I got into it, um, it was lurching like, it was trying to crawl out of its skin, and it made me nervous, to be honest with you. Um, when I pulled, pulled, it, pulled, it, pulled it off the trailer, it was, and I was not used to that, and I said, Guy, you go ahead. So Guy took over uh, driving the car. We're going to show you a little scene of Guy driving it up the road. It was quite funny. It did not make the TV, but um, I'm, we're going to show you behind the scene of Guy driving this car. Now I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. It's an 84 LTD station wagon. What has happened here is I've welded the front door shut. That's the back door. Front door is welded shut. When we welded the front door shut, we decided that we were going to pull, blow a bubble for this car. And there it is. So basically what happened is we framed off the top of the car with that round shape right there. We just kept putting metal in, took some square stock and went all the way around, made that shape all the way around with round stock. And then we welded it from square stock to that, square, that round bubble or that round section in there. We put square stock to it. Then we made panels and laid it on there. So there'd be, this is probably the cow here. Square stock going in, square stock going in from the top of the door, square stock going in all the way around. Studded it up from the floor so it could not fall down. And we filled that in. The wings are just round rod, bent, welded on top of the door, all the way back to the, to the trunk. We had cut the roof off of this. Um, we had to cut the roof because it was a station wagon. So when we cut the roof off, that's a piece of round rod that comes up here. And then we just wheeled a wing for it. The back section, exact same thing. A round rod went in here and welded on top of the tailgate that we cut off. Round rod in there to up the tailgate we cut off. I'm guessing most of it, but basically that's what went on. Piece of metal rolled and put in here, welded on top of the round rod, round rod, square stock, and all the way around the square stock. So that was just one big sheet of metal in here, one big sheet of metal here. Uh, we just took and continued it up here. Everything was done with the doors welded shut. Then we cut the doors open after we had everything. Just made it easier to, to try to make this wing here, try to make this wing here to match up. Basically, we just started from here, went all the way back, made a panel for the whole thing, and then we hacksawed it off or 
cut it with a die grinder. Uh, zip wheels die grinder. Uh, zip cut, that's what we cut it with, not a die grinder, zip cut. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit, not where to go yet, uh, where to tell you about this. The headers, you can see, are Frenched inside the door. Once the door was welded shut, um, I wanted the headers to come outside and be Frenched inside the door. Um, so we cut the door off. We made a piece of metal and we put it through the roller, welded it to the door, and then we come down and welded it to the sill, which gives us a place to French the muffler. I really like it that way. Um, the paint itself, um, it's just a metal flake candy orange, I would say. I painted the whole car this color. And um, what happened is when we got it out in the sunlight, you have to remember we, had a, we were always on, uh, on a time schedule thing going on. When we got out in the sunlight, you could see through that orange, tan, it was tangerine orange or something like that, you could see through that metal flake a little bit. It looked foggy, you could see through it. So what, what had happened, is the white we I paneled it what I did is just bring it aside can't have that took some tape and then went around it and did a panel job and painted all the the, the body shape I guess I paneled it to get rid of the the fog the see-through areas and it actually made the car, the car look ten times better and probably that's where paneling come became involved is there evolved is from someone painting something and being able to see through it and then they wanted to fix it without you know taking away all the paint because I enjoyed the color I just didn't enjoy being able to see through it and that's what we did and to me it really made it more than it was on the front fenders here is just a piece of top of the front fender piece of round rod piece of round rod all the way across piece of round rod piece of ramrod, ramrod, and then we made panels to fit that. Um, it's open underneath. This car has headlights on it. They're right there. Um, they're small, they're squinty, but they're there. Uh, we have a straight axle from, it, from Speedway Motors. That's where we bought that. Um, this car is a unibody car, and uh, it wasn't uh, that bad of a deal to put that underneath there. We wanted a gasser. Uh, on the chrome, you look at the chrome on this car, it's excellent. And the reason being is, is I sprayed it with WD-40 for it before I put it away. On that car, the art car, the wine car, I did not spray any of the chrome before I put it away. And that's the difference right there. Same sort of hubcap, same deal, uh, same building, same burn. Um, I sprayed it with WD-40 before I put it away and it made it a lot better. Uh, da, 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 da. So, the roof that I cut off of this car, um, we did a Jaguar here a little while ago, and I put in, I put, I was going to make it into a station wagon, and it turned up to, into being a two-door coupe. Uh, that roof came off of this car, so I do not throw anything away. I kept that roof because I knew I was going to use it someday. I didn't realize I was going to make it so small in the Jaguar, but that's what happened. On the wheel wells, you can see how that tire would not fit in an 84 LTD station wagon. A zip cup was used, and then we radiused the wheel wells because I just wanted that gasser look. Uh, on a gasser, generally it's higher in the front, just a little bit lower in the back. That is round rod, 5 inch, 5 eighths round rod, put in a roller, rolled it, and then welded on, got, got that shape to give us that radius look. On the back, this is just um, a piece of round rod from there, piece of round rod from there, bring it out, piece of round rod all the way around, and then we just made panels. Made a panel for this, made a panel for that side, made a panel for underneath. Uh, I've, I've broken the taillight since, kind of walked into it. I think it's a 64 taillight. We put a 59 taillight on the end of it, 59 caddy taillight on the end of it, and it just tr trying to make it look like it was, that's where the exhaust was coming out. Sort of wanted to make it look like a rocket car for the young people that were there, and uh, that's where the kids were, we were showing to, is young people. Uh, 
Guy was the, was the oldest young person there. Uh, he did a fantastic job driving it. Um, I have driven it once and the timing was off, so I, I just let off it because it was not right. Um, but anyways, when Guy did it for the fir very first time, drove the car up the road, Jolene has a scene and show. yeah, Jolene's gonna, she's got a scene on her camera and she's gonna show you this car going up the road. And it was, this is behind the scenes, this is something that you would have never seen. And what I'm gonna say is, how many hours of film do we do per car? I think 250. So Jolene thinks that we did about 250 hours of film work for every car. And the reason being is, um, if you had a month, if you were in there every day with two camera guys, three camera guys every day, because they watched us build this car from scratch, from nothing, they watched the whole process, you got to see 42 minutes of it. To me, <laughs> there could have been another six episodes on each car. There could have been a season for every yeah, car. Yeah, there could have been a season for every car, in my opinion. Uh, but that's up to them what they want to do with, with their, you know, with the film work. That's up to them. But in my opinion, they could have had a season for every car. There could have been uh, 13 seasons of Bad Chad Customs because. They had every, every bit of film work that was done in the car. How we made the wings, how we made the back. They showed the bubble somewhat. Just everything from doing the, the front end from the, from the straight axle um, to supercharging the engine, just the paint, everything. But we want to show you a little scene that um, happened when we got there. This is Guy, uh, the local uh, stunt man, I guess you would call him. Um, and there's, you know, a lot of people standing around. You can see the film crew filming us, uh, taking scenes, whatever they wanted out of it. But this is it. This is the very first drive that he ever stepped foot in the car. Never test driven. <laughs> Hard to believe, I know. <laughs> nice comment. This is a funny part. <laughs> uh, he had her mad at right to the floor. That's my daughter, Harley Riley there. Huh? A few locals. But uh, that was the scene when he, when he took off. We all thought that was so funny that he was trying to get it going. And um, he did, had his foot right hard on the mat. He did not care. He was going <laughs> forward. And he took off like a rocket. Um, all the kids that were there were fun that day. It was, you know, it was fun to talk to them. Uh, as you can see on the inside, the seat is one in, one in the middle and one in behind. So that's how you would drive it. Um, the roll bar is, is not much. We, we got it stuck in there for, um, for the drive. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna pop the hood on it. I had to take a minute. This is just round rod that comes off the end of the hood and shaped and then capped and put a piece of metal on it. So the hood, this is the original hood. A piece of round rod, round rod was welded on top of the hood, bring it out and then made that stuff and basically made a hood scoop looking thing on the front of it. But once I got it in shape with a round rod and then I just capped it. Um, I had to look around this car for a while. It's been four years, five years on this stuff that this car has ever been moved. All the cars were kept in a, just a storage building um, for potatoes or apples or whatever. And it's not the best, but it, it did the trick at the time. And now I'm gonna find the hood. First time I've opened the hood in four years. If it will open. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Now, I'm not sure how, oh, there it is. Not that bad, not that bad. The hood scoop, um, there we go. Look, I even painted underneath the hood. Wow, that surprised me. Hey. <laughs> Maybe that's the first time that's ever been up. Not sure. Oh, man. Um, 
You want to hold, you want to take this sweet hair, go on the other side? Take what? No, take this little bear, just hold this bear. Just hold that for a second. I'm going to see if I can get it up higher. <laughs> I, it wasn't made for short little me. <laughs> wow. Look, I got that dirty. No, it's just dirty underneath. Yeah. Anyways, that's the engine in it. Uh, it was never tested before we took off. It was just got running. And um, okay, it's just underneath the scoop, that's all. You can see the dirt that we wiped off it. Um, it was just got running and we took it to uh, what was going on. And, uh, and it, that was his first appearance. So it's a supercharged 302. Uh, we had, we got some race gas in it. Um, you can see how we did, we did the headers. It was just headers that are bought, cheap headers. And we modified them all to come up over the chassis and run out the side. If you want to come down here for a second, sweetheart, we'll show you down front here what we did with the, with the frame rail. On a unibody car, it had that inner fender to make it a lot stronger. Um, we obviously uh, did, did a little trick here. We, we uh, scissor braced it and made that frame rail extra strong. Um, we kind of did what the bridge would do, you know, did that scissor truss thing. The frame rail, we just capped the frame rail to make it look nice. And uh, that's what it is. You can see how the header was modified to come out here. So all this was made. This is round rod, Frenched inside the door so the exhaust pipe would go up the side. Uh, there was quite a bit of fabrication on this car, but that's what we do or that's what I do full time. Uh, have not started this car up since that day. Have not started it up since that day. So it's kind of, you can see the, I sprayed that with WD-40 and I'm thinking that'll come right off. Never, like I said, I haven't opened the hood since, but there it is in all its glory. All we did is wash the outside of it. Uh, I'm going to take a second. I'm just going to take a second for anybody wants to know how to blow a bubble, I'm going to show you exactly what's going on and how to do it. Before I do that, I, there's a guy, what, I forget what his name is. Gordon. Gordon. There's a guy named Gordon that bought the 62 Ford wagon office, or Mercury wagon office, that's starting his YouTube channel, and he's cutting up a Jaguar, and he's going to make a Daytona. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. And he's giving me a little bit of credit saying that I inspired him to go for it. And uh, that's probably the best thing in the world that I can think of um, that can happen from what we're doing. That's the best thing that can happen. And the reason being is, is because he's got something that he's going to be passionate about and go for it. And uh, doing this sort of stuff, like making something out of nothing, um, like he said, he's not destroying the car. He's working on it because the car was destroyed. <laughs> there's one, there's one, there's one. I can go through the garage and, and show you the cars that were um, destroyed before I started them. Uh, not that I destroyed them, it's that, you know, basically they were destroyed before I got it. Even the one that we did the four-door car into a truck, it was tore all apart, it was destroyed. All the pieces were missing. There was no glass in it, there was no chrome on it. Uh, There's no brakes on it. It was destroyed before we got it. So to say I destroyed it um, would be not correct. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you how to bow a bubble like that. That's all I'm going to do on this one. Um, I really enjoy this car. Uh, I took some time to wash it before we're doing the video on it, but I really enjoy this car. I think this car is quite amazing um, because I've never seen nothing like it in the world. I like the paint on it. The bubble turned out really nice. It might go faster than your average Mustang, probably. It's cooler than dang it. And I know for sure that it's going to provoke some to dislike it. And, it's, and that's what we call art. Um, we've got people that disliked the last car that we showed or the car before we showed, the 32. Um, they disliked that car. And it just tells you that it's art. It, 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 evol it makes emotions. People come out you know, and say certain things that 
That's up to them. I, I mean, what you write is what you are or what you're thinking. It's not what I am, but it does bring out emotion in people, uh, and that's what you call art. If there's nothing that you want to say or feel, um, the art must be kind of dull, if, it's, if, if, if you're not, if you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, that, 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 that. I want to thank everybody for the great comments. Appreciate it. The 32 got great comments. That red car got great comments. We want to thank you very much. We appreciate it. And um, keep coming back, keep watching, and I'll keep doing what I'm doing. And we're doing this today is because I'm trying to get the cars in the building. We got the building premier, premier finished up, and I'm trying to get things moved around. It takes a lot of work to um, move that truck from the side to that place position where it was. Jolene had to get on tra the tractor and show me her skills. And uh, believe me, she's got skills. Jolene looks amazing today, as always. Um, let's, let's, let's blow this bubble. I'll show you real quick how, it, how I do it. Um, it's plexiglass. It's plexiglass. When you heat up Lexan, it will bubble. Um, the time, I should put my, I get a marker. I'm gonna write it down, so if you ever wanna know, you can just come back to the video, and then you can, you can say, well, that's exactly what it needs. Four, um, four to blow a piece of plexiglass. Now, let's go up on the side before we get started. Come take a look. That plexiglass is probably three-eighths. Three-eighths, probably. It's quite thick. That white part is all plexiglass. That's Pepsi glass, probably three eighths, half, three eighths, half inch, three eighths. I think it's three eighths. So that's the mistake I made on the bubble top for the canning kid. That's the mistake I made. I used quarter inch. I used it was less thickness. And when you start stretching like that, you must realize it gets a lot thinner. But in order to blow a piece of Pepsi glass and be form, you know, to blow a bubble, three seventy five. That be degrees, would it not? 375 for a half hour. So you're, you're, you want your oven at 375. Then you apply your, your buck and you leave it in for 30 minutes and you have approximately, I don't know, a minute, maybe. Maybe a minute to, to play with it and adjust to play with the air. So in order to blow that bubble on that car, I need a piece of plywood. I'm gonna say this is my piece of plywood. Okay, I, need, I took this and welded a piece of metal. You can see I got an air chuck on the, on the back side of that. Got an air chuck on it. And I've got a hole. So what I've done is I applied it to a piece of plywood. So that piece of plywood had to be, it was four by eight. There's a piece of plywood there, four by eight. So I had to have a piece of plywood four by eight and I applied it in the center. I screwed it down. I put some sealant around it so it would not leak. Screwed it there so was stuck there, drilled a hole up through the center. So now I had that on the back side and had a hole in the center on a piece of plywood. Now, to make that shape, I had to cut that shape that I wanted to fit the car out of another piece of plywood. So this is the piece of plywood, and I'm gonna, I bring this inside because I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna hang it on the wall because it is history. Um, it was. I blew a bubble, um, this is the piece that done it, and someday that I'm not here, people will be able to see how the shape was made to blow that. So I took a piece of plywood, cut this shape out of it, gives me that shape up there. And, the, and the, how we got that shape there is because we had the shape of the car that we wanted. So on the canning kid, I'm gonna make the shape that the, the, the cockpit is in. Um, I'm not gonna make this shape, to try to fit the candy kid because that's not the shape. So if you want a smaller bubble, if you want a smaller one, you just make a smaller shape and you don't need as big as a piece of plywood. But we were making that big of a bubble, we needed that big a piece of plywood. So we have a piece of plywood with this underneath. We have a piece of plywood with the shape. Okay, so now that I have the shape, I have the two pieces of plywood. I'm just acting like this is a four by eight. And that's the four by eight, that's the shape. This one is right here with the thing on the bottom. So that's underneath of it. So now we've got a hole in the middle. So what we gotta do is we have to, we'd want to put something down on this piece of plywood because when we heat the plexiglass up, 
you wouldn't want it to take shape of the wood, like the, the grain of the plywood or whatever it is, plywood. You would not want the, the plexiglass to take that shape of the grain. So I, we grabbed a bed sheet, just a bed sheet, um, put it on this piece of plywood and just stapled it down underneath you can, tape it down underneath, whatever you want to do. Um, so I sort of got ahead a little bit. Um, when you have the hole coming through, I've got this piece of card, I got this piece of Bristol board here. If, if you just leave a hole, when you put the air to it, it's going to blow right up through the middle of the, of the plexiglass and then you're not going to get a bubble. It's just, the air is not going to go around the inside of the plexiglass, all the way around. The air is going to go right up through and you're going to have a mess. So before, just go we'll back up a little bit, before you put the bed sheet on, you must apply a piece of Bristol board, paper, or whatever to cover that hole up. So what happens here is where, where there's a hole there, I take and put a piece of Bristol board on top of it. I tape it along this edge and I tape it along this edge. And the reason being is this is the longest distance. I want that air to shoot out, to get out to the back side of the, of the bubble. So I want the air to come out here. I want the air to come out there. And the side will probably deal with on its own when it fills up with air. So what I would do is I would tape this piece of paper. I run a piece of tape down this side. I run a piece of tape down this side. Leave this end open. Leave this end open. So when we hook our air up to blow this bubble, um, the air is going to come out here, come out here, and, the, and, the, and it'll blow up. It'll blow up. Um, you can't tape all four sides, obviously, because you're not going to get no air. So once you have your piece of Bristol board uh, taped down on your piece of plywood, now, there, here's another thing. Where this bubble is that big, I used a full piece of Bristol board. I used a full piece of Bristol board because of the size of the bubble. I would not want to use a little tiny piece of Bristol board because I'm scared that the air would come out here too quick and not get down to here. So what I did is I used a full piece of Bristol board to try to get the air all the way down to each end. So that basically I taped a piece of Bristol board along here, along there, and then when I put the air up through, the air come out here and come out here, which raised my bubble. After saying all that, now we're going to go back to that bed sheet. Once you figure out what size of Bristol board you want on top of your hole and what size of bubble you're blowing, I would want, you'd want to put a bed sheet on top of the paper and the wood. So you're going to have a piece of, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have a piece of Bristol board or a piece of um, plywood. This is going to be on the bottom. So you can hook your air hose up to it. You're going to drill a hole through it so the air will come up through. Your piece of Bristol board or your piece of paper or whatever size you think you need is going to be taped down on two sides. And then you're going to put a bed sheet over top of it. Once we had that done, had a bed sheet over top of it, had this taped over the hole, then we take this piece and put it on top of the plexiglass. So the plexiglass goes on this, lays on this. That flat piece of plexiglass would lay on this. Four by eight sheet. We we'll just lay on, lay on the bed sheet. This piece here comes over and lays on top of the bed sheet with the plywood underneath of it and that underneath the bed sheet. So now when you have that, you have a sandwich. You have a piece of plywood with a hole in it. You have a piece of Bristol board to make your air go out either end. You have a bed sheet. You have your plexiglass. And then you have your pattern of your bubble that you want. When you go to stick it into the oven, you're going to have to have a lot of clamps to go around the edge, all the way around that thing. That's going to have to be clamped down really, really nice, all the way around. Like, I think it took like 40 or 50 pairs of clamps to get that clamp down. You want clamps from the piece of plywood here and this piece of plywood here. So you want to clamp that all together. So you're going to have plywood, bed sheet, plexiglass, plywood. You're going to clamp that all together. When you put it into your oven, um, what I did is I used a powder coating oven. Like if you're getting something powder coated, it, your oven would have to at least be that big to get it in there. 
so a powder coating oven somewhere you can get. Uh, you slide that in, you let it set on a bench. We had two benches, one down that end, one down that end. We, d we got the oven up to 375. We slid it in for 30 minutes. When it became 30 minutes, open come the door. Out carried the mold or the pattern that we had. One person goes underneath, hooks your air hose up, and one person is in the background turning the air on. And that was me. I turned the air on to, to blow the bubble up. And you can watch the bubble go up and down a little bit. You just got to just turn the air on a little bit. You'll watch it raise and then just it's kind of by eye and by feel, you'll blow the bubble up. And you'll sit there for probably two, close to a minute, uh, keeping your bubble the height that you want it. Um, you'll want to have somebody there to say, well, that's high enough, that's too high, that doesn't, whatever. But it's, it's by eye. You know, I wouldn't want something up like high in the air like a, you know, a big bubble. I want the bubble to, to be, you know, the shape of the car. The, the car, if that bubble was any higher, the car would look a little awkward to me. You want that bubble down nice and low, I think. But that's how you do it. And that's how I, that's how I done it. And uh, 370, I got 370. 375, 370, 375, sorry, 375, 375 for a half hour, and that's how we did it, so that bubble was blown at the local um, powder coating place, and uh, worked out well, um, I learned, this is what I learned on that, on that go of it, it did not matter, it did, really did not matter the thickness of the plexiglass, um, to blow it. That there bubble down there was uh, a quarter inch and it has deteriorated badly. It has checked, cracked and done all that stuff. I don't think that this bubble is ever going to do that because of the thickness that we have. It's very clear. It's very clean. Um, it looks really good. It's all in place. You can see if you want to come close. You, this could be polished out if, if you wanted it to be. You can see right over here, sweetheart. You can see this edge here. That's where the plywood was holding down the plexiglass. Because that plexiglass wants to pull out of that mold when you're blowing it. So that's the reason for having uh, all the clamps going around the edge. So if you want to blow a bubble, uh, that's basically how you do it. You can do it in your oven. You can, you can do it in your own oven. You want to blow a little bubble. Um, if you want it to, you know, anything. If you want it to do a maybe two small bubbles, uh, do a, a double bubble sort of thing going on. You would just have to do the mold and do it twice. You blow one and then you take, them, take it apart, take that bubble out, and then put another one in. In order to get this like this, uh, you have, we'd have to cut it, obviously. Cut it with a jigsaw. Take your time with an air hose. Take your jigsaw and just kind of blow the air hose, blow the jigsaw, you can cut it out. With pets of glass, sometimes it'll, it'll just melt back together on you. And uh, just take your time with, an air, like I said, an air hose, and you can go with it. Uh, do not rush it. Take your time and cut it off. Uh, we went around this with a belt sander, trying to smooth it up a little bit to make it a little bit better. Uh, we've got some bad Chad flexible chrome down there to help it. Um, there was no time to really be able to mount it to come up and off and off and on like that. Uh, we mounted it, we just mounted it. We can take it off, but it would take some time to get it off. We just had to pull some screws out of it. We weld some tabs on the inside and screwed it down. And that's what went on there. Uh, what else to say about it? So it was an L 84 LTD station wagon. I guess, I guess this is what I can say about it. It doesn't matter what you start with, it's how you finish, you know? It does not matter what you start with. You can start with anything um, and, and be happy with your project. And I am just as happy with this car as I am that Cadillac. I am just as happy with that car as I am with the dump truck or the 39 or the art car or the 32 Ford. It's, it's a piece of me when, when I look at that, it's something that uh, I saw and I thought that would be cool going down the road. Uh, it's not for everybody. And uh, we'll find that out in the comments. And when, when you see a comment that tears it apart and one says it likes it, you know right then.
it's art. It has provoked comments, so it's art. And um, I enjoy it, this, that's the fun of it. The young fella, Gordon, that's doing his Jaguar, um, trying to make a Daytona out of it. Um, in the end, it'll be a, a piece of his art um, because it wasn't there before, he made it. Anything else I should say about this car, baby? It's scary, it's scary to get, and like I will say, for me, it was, and probably not for a lot of people that drive fast cars and stuff all the time. But in, 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 all, in all God honesty, when I get in this car in that trailer, and I look back at Jolene, I said, I'm not driving this up the road, no way. That thing was just lurching to um, drive through the end of that trailer, wasn't it? It was just, <laughs> it really, it really, um, the supercharger on it really worked good. Um, the engine is a secondhand engine that we, that we acquired. Um, it was a good working engine, uh, I'm pretty sure but it was a second-hand engine and the supercharger was a second-hand supercharger. Uh, the guy that sold it to us said that he blew up a couple of his engines and that was enough. Um, so what happened there, um, it had a gasket that was sent with it and the gasket was kind of like too thin. It was leaking, it was running rich, and blowing the engine up. Um, made a new gasket for it, got some new gasket for, material for it, got it down on there, got it sealed up right, and man, oh man, I'll tell you, she's one mean machine. And uh, she's one mean machine. So all the inner fenders were cut out of this thing to lighten it up. The frame rails were scissor braced to make it the straight axle will come underneath of it. I was saying to Jolene this morning, wouldn't it be fun to take it to the racetrack and just, you know, I've never drag raced before. I've drag raced my own car up the road and thinking, you know, whatever, but I've never uh, done any drag racing before. But I think it would be fun to drag race the car. I'm not sure what it would actually do. Um, probably the only thing it would do is scare me. <laughs> and then you would get used to it after a while. I mean, let's get real. But this is another one that we're sticking in here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get another one. And the reason being is the weather here in Nova Scotia is allowing me to trailer cars to the garage and I'm going to do it because I want to. The cars have been down there for many years and they, they need a little bit of love and attention. Um, I scooped enough moose, mo mouse poop out of that interior um, to have a bowl of shreddies <laughs> and it's not what I'm interested in. If you put your car away, throw some WD-40 on your chrome or your stainless or whatever and, and that's what you'll have when you come back to it. If you do not, when you look at the hubcap on the OR car, that's what you'll have if you don't. Um, but this is it, the muscle, uh, bubble top race car, uh, bubble top gasser race car. And uh, some like it, some will hate it. I love it. All right, everybody, I'm gonna let you go. That's enough about that. Um, like if you like, if you don't like, throw a comment in. If you, if you, you know, want to subscribe, press the button. If you, uh, what can I say? If you want to build a car, go for it. You know, do it your way. And uh, we know that when you do something your way, you're the happiest. When you do something somebody else's way, that's, that's not happiness. Do it your way, grab anything you want to and go for it. An LTD station wagon with a bubble, with wings and a large front end. I love it. See y'all tomorrow.